But before I ask this question, I just uh, want to say that this is a sincere, sincere question and not a judgmental one. Um, I'm a resident of uh, Decatur, Georgia, and I've noticed that there uh, has become a very there has become a very prominent lifestyle of uh, homosexuality, uh, all the way up to the point that it's being accepted in a lot of the churches in my neighborhood. And in light of the uh, young man that was in the film earlier, uh, my question is, is it possible for a man or a woman to live a sincere Christian life as a homosexual? <clears throat> I appreciate you asking it, and uh, I believe every reason that you've given is that it's a very sincere question. That's a very tough one. It's one of those questions, no matter how you answer, somebody is probably going to take acceptance uh, to what you say, uh, exception to what you say. So let me, I'll take a few minutes to answer this because it's very critical. Let me start off by telling you a discussion I had with a major network reporter. I was doing three open forums at Indiana University in Bloomington, and uh, this was during the days that Peter Jennings was on his evening news, and Peter Jennings sent a reporter to do a program, to tape a program that I was doing, an open forum in uh, uh, Indiana University. There were over a thousand students and faculty packed there, and the, the, the reporter came up to me before and she said, I have to uh, ask your pardon, but I will not be able to stay for your whole talk. I'm only going to be here for five to ten minutes, take an opening snippet of what you say. It's part of a bigger program. I don't need to be here the whole time. I understand this could go for three hours. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, uh, so I'll be leaving in about five or ten. I said, just do me a favor. Please don't disturb the rest if you move very quietly. I said, but I'm surprised you're leaving that quickly because the real fun part of it starts after the talk when we're in Q&A. I said, I hope you could stay. Well, I started talking, and she sat and sat, leaned back. She didn't move. She stayed the entire three hours plus. She waited till the Q&A was over. She started to walk back with me to where I was uh, having a room, and she said, Mrs. Zacharias, I want to ask you a question. That's why I've stayed. She said, I'll tell you what turns me away from Christianity. She said, you people will talk against racism an awful lot, and I respect that. But then when it comes to the homosexual, you discriminate against the homosexual. She said, I see that double standard. I said, before I answer you, I notice a very interesting way in which you phrased your question. The first part of the question, you were phrasing it about an idea, racism. The second part of the question, you've personalized it and put a person in there that you discriminate against homosexual. I said, I think you should position the question univocally with equal uh, meaning to both terms. I said, having said that, let me ask you a question and then I'll answer yours. I said, the reason we are against racism is because a person's race is sacred. One's ethnicity is sacred. You cannot violate it. I said, my race is sacred, your race is sacred, I dare not violate it. I said, the reason we react against the issue of homosexuality the way we do is because sexuality is sacred too. You cannot violate it. I said, so my question to you is, how do you treat sacred one and desacralize the other? If you will answer that, I will be glad to answer you then. She was silent and she said, I've never thought of it in those terms. Sex is a sacred gift of God. I can no longer justify an aberration of it in somebody else's life, then I can justify my proclivities to go beyond my marital boundaries. Every man here who's an able-bodied man will tell you temptation stalks you every day. Does it have anything to do with your love for your spouse? Probably not, because you can love your spouse with a 100% desire to love the person, but the human body reacts to the sight, entertained by the imagination, and gives you all kinds of false hints that, the, that stolen waters are going to be sweeter. They're not. They leave you emptier. So a, disp a disposition or a proclivity does not justify expressing that disposition and that proclivity. That goes across the board for all, all sexuality. When God created mankind and womankind, it, is, it, it was his plan, not our plan. 
It is, it is extraordinary to me what he said. He said, it is not good for a man to live alone. Well, man wasn't living alone. God was with him. Why did he say that? He created the mystique and the majesty and the charm and the complementary nature of womankind in a way that made it possible for her to meet his emotional needs that God himself put only within her. Outside of himself, from himself, in her, in that complementariness. So you take that sacred commitment, it is a design by God. And somebody may say, well, you know, you don't know what it is like then to have that disposition. No, I've talked to people who do. One of the greatest saints of recent memory was Henry Nouwen. If you've read any books by Henry Nouwen, Henry Nouwen was a professor of uh, uh, psychology at Harvard University. And some years ago, he went to um, St. Petersburg in, in Russia, and, uh, and there he went into the, um, the, the, the famed Hermitage Museum, and he saw the painting of Rembrandt on the return of the prodigal son. He looked at that painting, and he couldn't get his eyes off it. Not for one minute, not for two minutes, not for one hour. He sat in front of that painting for three hours. It changed his life. He came back to Harvard, resigned his position, went and worked with the mentally retarded in Toronto. He disclosed in his closing book there that he was dispositionally a homosexual, but never fulfilled that for the sake of Christ. And I have read many authors who say that, so I say to the one who has that disposition, yes, it has to be tough. It has to be tough. But sometimes we renounce our dispositions for the sake of Christ and just wait and hope and trust for the possibility that he would give us that resistance. Now, the tail end of the answer is this. What does it take to believe and do? To be what? You have to fill in the blanks. If you say to me, Ravi, what does it take to be a Christian? I would say, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that God has raised him from the dead. You, with your heart and mind, trust in Jesus Christ, you're a believer. Then you come to me and say, Ravi, what does it say, take to come and belong to your church? I say, well, if you join this particular church where I'm a member now, there are certain doctrinal beliefs you have to believe. You, for example, you can't believe the Bible is 90% rubbish and 10% nice and still be a member of the church. You can't do that. You, there are certain doctrines to which you're committed. There's a certain code of conduct to which you're committed. So if you belong to a community of believers, it is not just the belief in Christ, but a certain community expression of that belief that you're submitted to. Now, you say, what does it take to teach at Wycliffe Hall, Oxford University? I'll say, now you have to add even more than that. So with each line of affiliation, you put the plus, 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 not because the second and the third make you a Christian, but it places upon you greater accountability and responsibility as a dispenser of truth to which you're held accountable by a community of believers. So is it possible for one in that state of mind and that disposition to be a Christian? Absolutely. But can one live practicing that and then become part of a teaching community and a com committee of committed believers? I think one would have to raise serious questions where does one draw the line then? Is it okay for the pastor to be a polygamist and be a, and be a pastor of the church at the same time? It ends up dying the death of a thousand qualifications and the character of God is impugned in the process. I think that's the way I believe that with you. <clears throat> <clears throat>